So the quote I chose, I'm going to go ahead and read it. With every cell of my being and with every fiber of my memory, I oppose the death penalty in all forms. I do not believe in I do not believe any civilized society should be at the service of death. I don't think it's human to become an agent of the angel of death. So if we were to look at this, right, and to summarize what this person is saying, we might, you know, want to look at who, who said this quote, right? When was it said? And sort of provide a bit more um, context. For example, if I do my research, right? I know that this is something that was written by a Holocaust survivor. And so that might be something that is important to mention. Uh, so I might just say simply, I might just say in this quote, which is already an indicator that we're going to summarize, in this quote, a known Holocaust survivor mentions, and so what does he talk about? Mentions, for example, he talks about very um, explicitly that he is not in favor of the death penalty. So that would have been an example of something we could add to our summary. In this quote, one Holocaust survivor mentions how he is uh, not in favor of the death penalty or capital punishment of any kind. So if you were only putting this after the quote in an essay, you would have only gone to the summary phase, right? But if I just left this here, and I didn't really go into detail or to depth about what it means. That means I'm only providing summary and I'm not providing analysis. And of course, teachers, you know, don't want to see that. They want to see that you know how to summarize and that you know how to uh, analyze as well. And so this is our summary of the quote. So how do we begin to analyze it, right? And so let's think back to what we said about summer. We talked about what does summer mean, right? In relation to the novel that we're reading. What does it mean? However, if it's not a literature class, let's say it's just a composition class, an English 1A class, again, you might not be reading any books to go off of. However, often in English 1A, you do have arguments that you need to try to prove. So let's say your paper, you decided that you want to talk about why the death penalty is wrong, right? And so if that is uh, your main argument, right, that you're not in favor of death penalty because, uh, you know, it's, you know, let's say uh, unfair, it's not humane, right? You want to use quotes that are in favor of your idea, or if you can use ones that aren't in favor of your idea in order to create a counter argument. However, if we wanna turn what we have here into analysis, what does this mean 
even though we don't have a novel in the class to come to connect back to the thing that you want to connect your summary with is your thesis statement your main argument what it is that you're trying to argue and what it is that you believe and so don't think that to analyze something it means that you can't have your own opinion in there you just got to know um, how to sort of phrase it and how to not necessarily say, you know, this is right because it's my opinion, but because this is what the research shows. So if we want to do analysis for this quote, let me do... We could say something along the lines of, so something I would do to transition between this summary into analysis is that I would connect uh, the person or the person who said the quotes opinion about the subject and then connect it with my own opinion on capital punishment is critical to understanding. If we want to simplify this even more so we don't sound you know, pretentious, we might just say is important. Important in understanding why the death penalty, and this is where you would connect it with your own opinion, why the death penalty is inhumane because and you want to give you know the reason and the evidence because eli or to say because he has witnessed firsthand the effects of extinguishing or ending, want to of ending a whole race of people during the Holocaust. And if I was arguing that you know the death penalty not only is it humane but it's also um, racist because. Stats show that more African Americans are in prison. Uh, African American men are more in prison than uh, white men, right? Um, and so I might say that, you know, something that this sort of connects, right? Eli's opinion uh, of the capital punishment of what's happening, seeing all these African American men who are in prison and who are getting uh, the death penalty, it's sort of um, doing the same thing that the Holocaust was doing in the sense that it's exterminating a whole uh, race of people. So I'm trying to think his opinion on capital punishment is important in understanding why the death penalty is inhumane. And I might actually take this out because, because it's better to have shorter sentences than it is to have longer. He has witnessed firsthand the effects of ending a whole race of people during the Holocaust. Mm, let's see. particularly Jewish people. So he knows that the American death penalty is also extinguishing A portion of the of the African American male population 
So this would be an example of going more into analysis of connecting, uh, breaking down the quote into smaller parts. What is this person trying to say? Not what they are saying, because again, that's the summary. And then once we have broken it down into smaller parts and we're getting into what is the meaning, we then want to connect that meaning with our own, right? With our own opinion about what it means. And so no one can necessarily tell you, right, um, that your analysis is wrong as long as you have the evidence to prove it. And so how you gather that evidence is by looking at these quotes, looking at the parts. Uh, for example, I might note how uh, something else he notes in here. Uh, I might note how he says, I don't think it's human become the angel, the agent of the angel of death. So basically what he's saying here, as we know from the fact that he mentioned an angel, he's essentially saying that he believes people shouldn't be playing God. They shouldn't be deciding who lives or who dies. You know, no one should have that ability. And so if I were to talk about this part of the quote as well, so let's say, so he knows that the American death penalty is also extinguishing a portion of the African-American population. I might say to this, let me add, he mentions an angel of death. He mentions his belief that people shouldn't play the angel of death, which means mm, I might just put meaning. They should not be allowed to play God. No one has the right to decide who lives or dies. And so I actually can take this, right, and I can combine these two ideas together. So I might say uh, together, in this way, a known Holocaust survivor mentions how he is not in favor of the death penalty or capital punishment of any kind. He mentions his belief that people shouldn't play the angel of death, meaning they should not be allowed to play God. No one has the right to decide who lives or dies. His opinion on capital punishment is important and understanding why the death penalty is inhumane. He has witnessed firsthand the effects of ending a whole race of people during the Holocaust, particularly Jewish people. So he knows that the American death penalty is also extinguishing a portion of the African American male population. And as you can see, we have everything here in its entirety. We have a summary of the quote, we have a transition between the summary and the analysis. Uh, in particular, we sort of begin to dissect the quote, right? Because we picked apart a small section of the quote. And so this is sort of connecting the analysis and the summary together. Summary up here. Ah.
and then the analysis. So what we have here is very strong. It still could use some editing. Uh, you know, I might change the fact. Here I have mentions twice. So actually I could probably take this out and just say his belief, right? And so I would still want to revise it. However, notice how we have everything that we need here. We have the quote, we have the summary, the connector, and the analysis. And basically what that's doing is it's sort of creating like a sandwich. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be in an essay. Um, you know, you have the quote, summary, connector, and the analysis. And so it's basically like this each time, you know, you have a quote is that you want these three things after it. And something else that's important to note is that I kind of went out of order here, right? I had the quote first, then the summary, then the analysis, and then I added the sort of connector or transition in between the two. And so you don't always have to write the paper in order. In fact, you can mix match it just as long as you end up having right each of these three things. Uh, after the quote, it should uh, be fine. You just want to make sure it all is cohesive, that it's smooth, that it makes sense. Um, but a lot of students actually prefer uh, writing things out of order because often the human mind, you know, isn't very linear and also can, you know, get boring after a while to, you know, go from uh, this doing the same thing over and over again for each body paragraph. So notice, I mean, even just looking at this whiteboard, how much of a mess I made, you know, everything's scattered. It's a bit disorganized, which it will always be at first. But the great thing about writing is that if you keep at it, eventually you'll get something that, you know, is a lot more beautiful.